Well, hi, welcome to my latest video. Well, this one hopefully is quick. I'm going to demonstrate a product I got to manage my cables. It's one of the few non-microprocessor based devices that I've bought over recent history. It's totally mechanical. It has one giant switch to it. And uh, it has 20 different connectors that it can test. It has a left side and a right side and I will demonstrate how we can test a particular cable in a couple of minutes. It's from a company called MFL and it's their CT20 cable tester, which I believe it has 20 different cable connections that you can use. Some of them are dual purpose, where you can do two different cables in the same connector. Others are single. So I've got a collection of cables here that I went ahead and got out of my various cable boxes that I have, some relatively new, some I have not seen them in probably 20 years. So we'll take a look and I'll show you how they work. But before I get to that, one thing that's very, very handy is the back of this device. And here what they do is they actually show all the different kinds of cables that can be tested. And it shows you what pins to expect to be connected if it's a straight through version of that cable. Obviously, if it's not a straight through version, uh, you could see some crossover. And a couple of these have that, as I'll show you in a few minutes. So this is handy. It's painted onto the back of it. It's a nice solid steel case. This knob is the, real, the only control knob you can do. And the only thing it'll do with no cables attached, if you turn it all the way to the right, the light comes on for battery check. The battery uses a standard nine volt battery that goes into the bottom here. There's a little drawer and you can put a standard nine volt battery into it. So that's handy, it's not no special battery, not rechargeable, but um, Unless you actually have a LED on, there's no connection to the battery. You know, I didn't open it up, but I bet you it's primarily wires, a couple of resistors maybe, and a lot of connections between these various connectors. So let me go ahead and demonstrate it. Okay, here it is. I'm surrounded by a bunch of different cables I want to try to test. I don't think I'll go through them all, but I'll go through some of the key ones and some of the interesting ones. So I'll start off with a standard HDMI cable. Now, an HDMI cable actually has... Uh, what is it? I think it's 18, 19 pins. We'll find out in a moment. This is a working HDMI ca cable here. There are two connectors that are right here at the top. And this is one that's a little bit tricky. So let's put the cable in and I'll show you what I mean. Always reset back to one, the line for one. By the way, these little arrows here, that represents the left-hand side. And the arrow over here tells you that the top row is the right-hand side. It can do 10 different connections by default for most cables that are here, except for the HDMI. That's why I'm starting with that one. So let's plug this in. We'll put this first cable in over here. And we'll put the other side of the connector over to here. And right off the bat, pin one, the LED lights up. And if I go through it, you can check for connections all the way through to pin 10. Now, there are more cables and connections than that. Let's reset it, and now let's hit this button over here. This is specifically for HDMI cables. When you hold that button down, it switches to the other set of connections, and it shows red LEDs. So as you go through this, each pin, kind of bright, there's no 10. It ends at 9, which means there are 19 connections. When I let the little switch go, now it's going to the other half. So you have to check all 19. Now I am disappointed a bit, and there's no real way to convert it, that it doesn't support uh, display cables, display port cables. That would have been nice if that was an addition on there, but it's not. So that's the HDMI. Let's take a look at a standard RJ45 connector. Now this is not going to really test the integrity, the data integrity of the cable, just whether or not all the pins are connected. There are eight. So if we plug in one side and then the other right well I always like to start there you'll see one two three four five six seven eight so we have eight different connections there is nothing in the last two so this is a working cable as far as the connections are going it does not mean that it will transfer signals well because we don't have anything that's measuring the impedance of the wires and the length of it or anything like that, like a more advanced RJ45 networking tester would do. This one here is a printer cable, so I'll start with this. It has a type A at one side and a type B at the other. And that works out well because we have both. You can mix them. So if we connect the left-hand side with the type A, make sure we get it right, 
And then we put the other side, which has a type B on it, we put that into this port. Let's see what we got. There are four connections for a USB. So we got one, two, three, four. So this, nothing else connected. This cable is a good one that goes type A to type B. If I wanted to check an extension, this here is a USB extension. You would need another cable. This does not have any male connectors coming out of it, but that's easy to do. You would plug in to the one end of the extension, the type A. In this case, that's what I have, a type A extension. I put the other end into the B, and of course, this end into the A. And we can check all four. And that tells you that this short little USB extension is working just fine. I had to use another cable though in order to, that I knew worked, so I test that first in order to check something like this that has a female connector at one end, like an extension. Oh, here's a telephone cable. Now, not many people have landlines these days, but some do. It uses an RJ11. Well, you can always stick an RJ11 into an RJ45, but you won't see all the pins connected. There's much less. So let's put both connectors in and let's see what connectors there are. Okay, and they're crossed over. We have four connecting to five. So pin four on the left is connected to pin five on the right. And the next one is the reverse of that. And that is how a standard telephone jack connector is supposed to work. So this is a good telephone cable if you have a landline and you happen to have some of those. This one here has a micro USB. So USB A at one end, we just plug it in here. And guess what's at this top here? The micro USB. So we would plug this in at the, the right-hand side. There we go. And now we can connect, test it out. Do we have four connections? And we do. Also, it shows you that the ground connector is also connected at the same time. There's a separate little light for that. So this one has a fifth wire in there, which is the ground connector. Basically, the case to the opposite case. The, there's a separate wire running for that. Now, let's take a look at a... Uh, we call it a mini USB. Now there is no connector here for a mini USB. It has a micro, it has type B, it has type A, but it doesn't have the mini, which is really a type B, a mini type B. We don't have that. But you can get adapters, and I do recommend if you were to get this, get yourself adapters like this to convert from, in this case, a type B over to a type A, but a mini type B. So we plug this in over here, and then we can plug this into the left and right appropriately. And there we go. There is no ground connector though between those two. So that ground light does not come on for this cable. Okay. Now let me show you one that you really should be aware of and one of the things that makes this thing worth what you pay for it. Okay, this looks like a standard USB type A to micro USB. However, let's plug it in and see what we got. I have labels all over this, and you'll see why in a moment. Let's plug in the Type A over here, and let's plug in the micro at the other end. Well, we have a pin 1, no pin 2, no pin 3, and we have a pin 4. It only has two wires running through it. If you read the labels that I put on it, it says power only. This comes with a lot of USB chargers, like for batteries and things like that. You wind up with a cable that they give you that will not transfer data. The data lines are missing from this. Now, some people would just toss these right off the bat. As long as I have it labeled, I'm okay. That way I'll know what I'm dealing with because I don't have a lot of really short micro USB to USB A's anyway. I can't think of one that I have that does do the data. It probably is in one of my boxes for one of my cameras or something, but I can't think of where it is off the top of my head. So I'll hang on to that in my general cable box. Now, if you have audio, this is where this really comes in handy because most of the connectors over here are audio type connectors. Here's an interesting one. It's got a female TRS connector and it has two male TR cables, one for left and one for right. So it splits the two parts of the stereo. Now, before I can test this though, because I don't, again, I don't have male adapters here. I can put a male adapter on here. I probably have one around somewhere, but it's easier to first get a, a, a regular TRS 3.5 millimeter jack. And let's test that first, because this one supports that. So I come in here, I can see I have pin one, two, and three, okay? So that's a working cable for a TRS connector. 
Another disappointing thing is this does not support TRRS to TRRS. There is no connector for it. I can't think of a way to do it with adapters. Maybe I will, but right now I don't. So let's plug this in, one end into this female connector, and let's plug in to the right side, the other end of this conversion cable that I put on here, or this adapt that cable becomes an adapter. And then off to the side here, I have the regular quarter inch single side connector for audio. Let's see what we get. If I plug this one in, look what I have here. I have pin one connected to pin one, pin two to connected to pin two, and then pin one is also connected to pin three, and that's it. So keep that's one to one, two to two, one to three. If I connect the other end, in this case the blackjack, let's see what we get into this connector here. I get one to one, two to three, and one to three. So you can see that these represent the two halves of the stereo connection to this one 3.5 inch jack. So if you want to test one of these, you can do it. As long as you have, you know, some other cables to, to work with, right? Now, if you really want to get into it, let's say you have something like this. It's similar to that, but it's done with the smaller connectors and it has an RCA connectors on the bow for left and right. So you can plug this guy in to here and then guess what you got over here? You got the RCA connector things and you could do the same type of thing I just did. Plug one at a time in and you can see in this case, it doesn't have the one to three connector. It only has is one to one and two to two for that white jack. And let's see what the red does. Red has one to one, and this one goes two to three. And that means, those are the pins that are, if you notice, the top one is this right hand side. So that means on this TRS connector is what those pins represent. So that's how they get split up when you're going from one type of jack to this split type jack. Very similar to what we did with the quarter inch cable a moment ago. And of course you can do things like if you have a regular one, you're having trouble with the audio. I know people have had that with some of the devices I've shown. Well, you can go ahead and test that out directly from one end to the next. It's straight through RCA. We have RCA on both sides and we could check to make sure that we have the two connections that are needed for every one of these RCA. I won't bother checking them all though. Now let me show you a couple of very oddball cables here. First of all, you're not going to see this too often anymore unless you have a real historical PC, one of the uh, ones that I used to build 25 years ago. This is a cable for the keyboard. And guess what? We have that jack here. This jack actually supports three pin, five pin, seven pin, or eight pin. It has all eight pins there, both sides. This one here is a five pin cable. So you have to keep that in mind. Look at the number of pins and you can see if it makes sense. So if we plug this in here and you plug the other end over here, we can see pin one goes to pin six, two to four, three to five, and then four to one, and then five to two. An oddball cabling, and that's the way these keyboard cables on the legacy computers, that's how they used to work. So if you happen to be playing with some, some of the legacy equipment and you wanna build one and you need a cable like this, but you're not sure if it works, this will help you do it. And then finally, this is a cable that I was unable to identify. It looks like an RJ45, but let's see what it has in terms of pinning. I'll plug in each side, let me just reset this. Look at this, we have on the left, pin one goes to pin six on the right. On the left, two goes to pin three on the right. And then three goes to pin eight. And then four goes to pin two. Five goes to pin one. Six goes to pin seven. And seven goes to pin five. And then eight goes to pin four. That's extremely odd. I tried looking it up. It's not a, a network crossover cable, which I thought it was because the pins don't match. This is probably made for some special equipment. Now, since it has these connectors on it, I made this cable years ago. It was probably in a manual for some piece of equipment that I had, maybe a, a network switch or something, one of the old ones that uh, had a maintenance port on it. And it used a cable like this in order to have your computer directly talk to that switch. It could be serial just happened to be using uh, the regular networking type wiring, which will work fine. You know, it's high integrity cabling. Serial can be done over this. And uh, I do have a cable for one of my old switches that I did find, but the connectors aren't here and I don't, can't do a conversion. So I didn't show that one here as well. But 
this is a pretty good sampling of all the different things that this particular device can do. If you're interested, like I said, this costs about 60 bucks. What I also did is I, and you'll find this down in, in the notes, links to this stuff, to the device itself, if you wanted to buy it. I have this case that I bought. It's a pencil case, but guess what? I did the measuring and it fits exactly right and it can zipper up and it keeps it nice and cushioned. It's got, actually I cut off piece off where you put pens. I thought that that would get in the way of this button. So I just, you know, cut it off, no big deal. And I left a zipper part here for putting any special adapters that I want to do, like the one I just used you know, to convert from a USB-A to mini USB-B, okay? So there we go. Um, hopefully uh, you found this interesting. Until the next time, take care.